Okay, folks, it just so happens that there are two racially charged trials that are going on at the same time, and it's almost inevitable that uh, commentators on the left and possibly on the right are going to try and make these apples and apples instead of apples and oranges. The first trial, of course, is the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, and that is the trial in which Kyle Rittenhouse shot three people who were attacking him in Kenosha after riots broke out over the shooting of Jacob Blake. Now, it's for that reason that this is a racially charged trial, even though the people that Kyle Rittenhouse shot were white, uh, and he himself is white. So it was not an interracial shooting, and yet there's racial overtones on it, just because he's a white guy who happened to defend himself during a BLM riot. Now, Kyle Rittenhouse has already been exonerated on the lesser charges of uh, illegal gun possession and uh, breaking curfew, so the only charges that he's yet to be exonerated of, hopefully, are the charges of the shootings themselves. And I'm hoping that when the jury returns, hopefully today, I hope they don't drag it out forever, uh, that they will exonerate him on all the charges because it's clear from the video evidence, it's clear from the testimony, it's clear from everything that's been presented so far that he's innocent of all the crimes. Now, however, there is a second trial going on, which is the trial of the shooter, uh, uh, the killers of Ahmad Arbery. Now, there's three men involved, although only one of them actually did the shooting, but uh, uh, Travis McMichael is the person who was holding the gun that killed Ahmad Barbary, and he's the one who brought the gun. And uh, then you've got his father, Greg McMichael, and then you've got another man who was just following along in the car, and I get the feeling he's probably going to be let off because all he was doing was basically filming the scene. And at one point he may have tried to cut off Ahmad Arbery's route of escape in one particular direction, but uh, uh, it's kind of sketchy on whether that, that is actually going to hold up. Now... People are going to try and compare Kyle Rittenhouse to the McMichaels. I'm just going to focus on the McMichaels here. They're going to co try and compare uh, the, these uh, men together. They're going to call them all. They're going to lump them all together as white supremacists, or they're going to call them all a, as uh, white people who are being railroaded in the courts. Now, my position is that Kyle Rittenhouse is innocent of all the charges, but the McMichaels are not. The McMichaels are probably going away for a long time, and here is why. Uh, the McMichaels pursued Ahmad Arbery thinking that he had committed a burglary uh, when they had absolutely no evidence of his having done so. Now, there, there is a citizen's arrest law in Georgia that allows you to pursue someone whom you, who, whom you uh, have witnessed committing a felony. If you have seen someone commit a felony and that person tries to flee, you do, as a citizen of Georgia, have the right to try and make a, a citizen's arrest of that person. Not if it's a misdemeanor. If he was just doing some sort of misdemeanor trespassing or something, then you couldn't pursue the person in that case. But if it was a felony, you could. But only, only, and this is the important part, if you had immediate knowledge of that person's felony, then you could pursue that person and make a citizen's arrest. So the story that the McMichaels are trying to use to defend themselves is that, hey, we thought this guy was burglarizing this, pla this uh, uh, place that we'd seen him on before because we saw him running through our neighborhood and that house is, uh, that he was, we think he was burglarizing, it was a house under construction, that we think that he was burglarizing that. So we went and we, we got our guns and we jumped in our car and we went after him and then, you know, we tried to stop him and in the process he went for my gun and I shot him and blah, blah, blah. You can't start, you can't initiate that citizen's arrest process if you don't have immediate knowledge of the felony that Ahmad Arbery had, that you think Ahmad Arbery had allegedly committed. So, when you hear people trying to make comparisons between the Ahmad Arbery, uh, not the Ahmad Arbery trial, it's the, the Gregory and Travis McMar McMichaels trial, when you tr see people try and make comparisons between that and the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, realize that as far as Rittenhouse and the McMichaels are concerned, the situation is apples and oranges. Kyle Rittenhouse never shot anybody unless that person was actually attacking him. Now, Travis McMichaels, granted, Ahmad Arbery did go for his gun, and it is largely for that reason that Travis McMichaels shot him, but at the same time, Travis McMichaels and Greg McMichaels were the ones chasing Ahmad Arbery throughout the neighborhood, and so you really can't you really can't say that Ahmad Arbery was an initiator of aggression in that uh, particular case. Now, there is a parallel that can be established here. You can establish a parallel, a comparison, between Kyle Rittenhouse and Ahmaud Arbery. 
If you want to make a parallel between the two cases, that's where you should make the parallel. Because in that case, it was the, the, the circumstances were the same. You have Kyle Rittenhouse, who was trying to run away from people chasing him. You had Ahmaud Arbery, who was trying to run away from people chasing him. Both men were trying to run away from people chasing them. And the only real difference here is that Kyle Rittenhouse was armed. And he could actually do something about the fact that he was being chased. Ahmaud Arbery was not armed. And so when he went for the gun of one of the people who was uh, attacking him, he wound up getting shot and killed. So uh, Kyle Rittenhouse survived. Why? Because he was armed. Uh, just another reason why we have the Second Amendment in America. So if you want to say, if somebody tries coming to you, even if it's a prominent conservative commentator trying to say that, oh, the, the, the McMichaels and Rittenhouse, that they're, they're the same, they're of a piece and stuff. No, tell that person that Kyle Rittenhouse and Ahmaud Arbery are the same, that they're of a piece. And that uh, Kyle Rittenhouse survived because he was armed. Maude Arbery did not survive. He was not armed. Uh, let, let them chew on that for a while. So uh, anyway, I'm Mike Partika. Thank you for watching. And uh, I hope we come to a successful, in my view, exoneration of Kyle Rittenhouse for all the charges of which he's been accused and that he can go back to living what is going to be a hopefully normal life. I happened to see the other day that uh, Nick Sandman, who uh, was the kid who was featured prominently in that video who uh, confronting that uh, Native American veteran, uh, one of the Covington kids, one of the Covington kids uh, who, who was railroaded in the press for supposedly be being racist toward this Native American veteran and is now suing all the newspapers for all their worth and winning his cases, I might add. Uh, he actually wrote a uh, uh, column supporting Kyle Rittenhouse, and I was uh, pleased to see that because I actually did have him in mind, thinking that maybe they should go on a go on a world tour or a speaking tour or something together and uh, see how that goes. So anyway, thank you for watching, and uh, please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, get notifications of videos like this and other videos like my Don't Take This as Gospel series, and I will talk to you later.